These are the new Race Face Aero wheels. How are they? Let's get on the trail and find out. Muddy. I love it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like we're in Ireland. Oh, death defying. Fox invited Logan and me down to their headquarters near Santa Cruz, California, just last week to check out some new stuff, including these new Race Face Aero wheels. I've only had these wheels for a week or so, so this is absolutely not a long term durability review. This video is simply a first look and initial experience. We're here at the famous Fox factory headquarters along with like 50 other media. So you're probably gonna see lots of content from this, but we're gonna learn about a bunch of race face and Easton stuff. So let's cruise on in and get a bit of a tour of what happens here at Fox factory suspension, whatever you need to call it. Upon entering the conference room, I was a bit concerned we get approached about purchasing an exclusive opportunity involving Caribbean cruises and timeshares. But in reality, it was more of a sneak peek behind a curtain than it was any sort of Kool-Aid buffet. We, I think, have everybody. We might have a couple stragglers, but we're just gonna go ahead and get started because we only have so much time, so. Many of you are familiar with Easton, which was a larger OEM wheel supplier during the 2000s and 2010s, and who was eventually purchased by Raceface in 2014. Then a few months later, in a very clever business move, Fox Factory purchased both of these brands. Easton became the road brand, and mountain bike products now live underneath the respected Raceface name. This was a very smart move as the hubs of many of the Easton mountain bike wheels weren't particularly amazing. Thankfully, that old hub design was binned many years ago. Today, we're looking at the Raceface Aero wheel set, which is a carbon wheel set built for all around mountain bike trail riding. You know, the kind of riding I do most. But above everything else, the big story here is an emphasis on compliance. On average, during a bottom out event, average weight rider on a basically 36, you know, standard trail enduro bike, you're gonna see about five millimeters of vertical deflection in the wheel. It's not that much, especially when you consider the other things happening or sort of absorbing vertical impacts on your bike, which is actually a lot of things. Do me a quick solid, scroll down, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys for more wheel comparison videos. The existing carbon trail wheel, the Next R, was mentioned as being good, but too stiff for some trail riders. The race based marketing team reported that the Enduro racers were more fond of aluminum wheels. And in theory, that was due to more increased compliance. I will certainly point out that a big reason most professional racers run aluminum rims is that they can take a mega hit and dent, usually you're still retaining air pressure. This is quite obviously an advantage over the crack and shatter attribute of some carbon wheels, as that quickly deflates both the tire and a racer's chance at finishing the stage or even the race. With that material detail aside, let's dive into that compliance claim. Raceface claims these carbon aero wheels offer up to five millimeters of vertical compliance. The rims feature front and rear specific designs, an asymmetrical profile, a 30 millimeter inner width, and use straight pull spokes, of which five spares are included with each wheel. The big question here is can just five millimeters of rim compliance make any sort of an actual difference? To find out, I took home two pairs of these wheels back to the Northwest, one pair for the mountain bike, and I decided to put one pair on the gravel grinder. No, these aren't gravel grinder wheels, but neither is my gravel grinder a gravel grinder. What are titles anyhow? You might have noticed that I still ride hardtails and even rigid bikes. As soon as the word compliance gets introduced into the conversation, I get all warm and fuzzy, queuing thoughts about how these amazing shockless wonder bikes make it clearly apparent as to whether or not a component is indeed compliant. It's gonna do a bit of gravel grinding this spring. So what bike do I grab? My favorite bike. And with these smaller tires, I feel like it's the best option I have in my whole quiver for actual gravel grinding. Work with me. This is totally a gravel grinder. I promise. For my gravel setup, I'll use the lightest, skinniest, trendiest tires I have, which in this case are the light casing, tan sidewall, WTB Trail Boss light fast rolling tires set up tubeless. Running low pressures of 25 PSI up front and 27 PSI out back, these should definitely get me in the gravel door. The wheels I had on the gravel grinder were these pretty gnarly mountain biking wheels from Industry 9 heavy duty tires, cush core front and rear, all the things. Let's weigh these. Let's see what we're at, just zero it out. So weight of these plus a strap. We're at 5,530 grams. Let's weigh the gravel grinder setup I just put together. Before we find out the number, 
I wanna give big thanks to my friends over at Jensen USA who sponsored this video and made it possible. Thank you, Jensen. I'm not supported by Raceface or Industry9 or DT Swiss or any wheel brand by any shape or form. I am supported by Jensen and they're an online dealer for a whole bunch of wheel brands out there. I'll link to Raceface wheels at Jensen down in the description below. Anything you purchase from those links down below at Jensen will help support my channel. It's how we make this content happen. Big thanks to all of you for supporting me that way. Huge shout out to Jensen for their support. Those guys have been huge. Let's see what these things weigh and how they compare to the mountain bike setup. Cliffhanger to, oh, look at that. Just under 4,200. So we had 55.30 down to 4,200. <laughs> so we're 1,330 grams lighter with the gravel grinder setup. I think that'll be noticeable on the gravel road. Coming from my Cheater mountain bike wheel set, I'm looking forward to running this new configuration. Initial thoughts are positive, as this setup is several pounds lighter than my mountain bike setup. While obviously harsher than my old 2.6 heavy casing tires with Cushcore front and rear, six millimeters more aluminum rim width, and only 20 PSI, anything short of an Arctic Explorer wheel will definitely feel harsher. But I've been impressed with the feel of the era. This setup has me optimistic my tank will survive miles and miles of seated grinding. Now let's get back to what actually matters, mountain biking. To properly experience the corporate claims of the era wheel, I swapped the carbon hoops directly onto my aluminum hardtail, the Haro Saguaro. I brought over the exact same tires and rear cush core I've had for the last few months, with the only differing part being simply the wheels themselves. Thus far, I've ridden these wheels on four different bikes, the Orbea Occam, the Ibis Ritmo, the Stooge Dirt Bomb, and the Haro Saguaro. This section of trail is pretty fast with a few little like root drops continuous. And I've ridden this on the metal wheels and it's fine, it's doable. I'll be darned, it's a little bit smoother with the carbon aero wheels. I don't have a million data points, I just have my set of super solid DT EX 1700s, great wheels, and then these, but yeah, I'm actually noticing this. It's not just a trend or whatnot. Unfortunately, on both the Occam and the Ritmo back in Santa Cruz, the bikes were outfitted with ultra lightweight Maxxis XO Plus casing tires. I can't honestly tell you that I was evaluating the wheel ride feel with such a flexi tire, so let's ignore those first impressions. Coming into all this, I was a bit pessimistic. Over the years, when folks tell me compliance, that often means our parts are flexy and sketchy. I was admittedly a bit doubtful of the compliance claims. Now, the worst place to ever feel flex is when hitting jumps. To test this, I took my hardtail to a jump trail. Look at the scope of this landing with my bike for scale. That thing's like 12 feet tall. I wanted to mention something that I think is pretty important. A lot of the time in mountain biking, people will talk about compliance and how comfortable it is to ride on the trail and how important that is. And then they'll forget that when things are too flexy, they feel like noodly pieces of shit. But in this case, I'm pretty impressed with what Race Face has done. On bigger jumps and stuff, these things are solid enough that I can pump into them. They're not flexing anywhere weird on the takeoffs and the burns, it's all good. Hitting jumps, over clearing jumps, all that. There's plenty of support there. So these are definitely not overly flexy bullshit. On the trail where it's rocky and rooty and you do need that compliance, Ew. it's there. It's not like, gonna make a world of difference to your mountain bike, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. And I did not think I would be this impressed by these things. So kudos to the folk over at Rase Fase. Color me impressed. Tire compliance is definitely more noticeable than wheel compliance, but holy smokes, I was surprised at just how much I did notice the compliance aspect of the aero wheels. You're probably halfway through composing a comment now asking, what about Ew. Industry 9 wheels? You used to love those, what happened? The stiff Industry 9 spoke system builds up a really rigid wheel, and for my uses, that's been a very positive attribute. For my highly active and pumping riding style, when paired with double down, DH casing, or tough casing tires, those Industry 9 wheels have a wonderful feel of immediate acceleration. The air is accelerated quite well from pumping, well enough that I could get sufficient speed to clear a few bigger gaps. This was a very pleasant surprise. I can't claim to have truly tested Industry 9 wheels back to back with these aero wheels, but my gut feeling is that the aero wheels are a softer overall feel, and that's really nice for casual trail riding. I expect the i9 will remain my preference for bigger, more aggressive rigs. Think 160 millimeters of travel and larger. I expect a subtle difference when pumping, with the edge going to the i9, but the trade-off being the i9 will also require those burlier tires to avoid a harsh feel. Now that said, I stopped playing the light tire game nearly a decade ago, something I don't regret oh. one bit. I found light tires to be a bit like playing catch with a stick of dynamite. It's great while it's great, but make one mistake and the fun ends with a loud bang. And let's not forget to discuss that vault rear hub. The hub has six poles, which consist of three sets run in two separate phases. I cannot comment on the long-term durability. I will mention that the Orbea Occam uses a flexier split pivot type rear end. On that bike particularly, I did hear a couple of pops resulting from a pole having a slightly delayed engagement. 
This only ever happens when pedaling while the bike is under a torsional load, such as sprinting out of a corner. And this is actually something pretty normal. I'll also get that on occasion with Industry 9 Torch and 1-1 hubs, and sometimes even with the Hydra. However, Hydra are designed to incorporate that specifically into their design, giving me a bit more confidence. But the Vault Hub is very common now, and it should be easy to find replacement parts should the need ever arise. To boil this all down as simply as possible, how noticeable is the extra compliance of the Aero wheel? I'd say it's about as noticeable as adding a Kush core to a wheel. The ultimate would be an Aero wheel with a Kush core, kind of like my hardtails running. Taints everywhere can rejoice in a chamois oh. celebration. Now, is that ride difference substantial enough to validate spending $1,600 on a new set of these wheels? That's a big ask. I'm more rider and experience focused, so I'd probably splurge for a week of riding in Whistler Squamish before a component upgrade just for the sake of it. But if your existing wheels are trashed and it's indeed time for new hoops, well, the unique proposition of the new Aero wheels would surely have me considering them for all around trail use. Thanks again for joining me. This video is a lot of fun to put together. Thanks to Race Face Fox for having me down to Santa Cruz. Thanks to Jensen for supporting this content. Scroll down, hit that link below to read about all the Race Face wheels over at Jensen USA. And once again, hit the subscribe button, help us all out. Thank you so much, everyone. I'll see you in the comments. Peace and wheelies.